Sunday in Advent. And Advent, as you probably already know, is a season of anticipation as we prepare for the breaking in of the light into the darkness. And we see this in a very literal way as our days grow shorter, just until right before Christmas Eve on December 21st, which is the shortest day of the year. So this morning, as we greet one another, let us join our hearts together in anticipation as we joyously and expectantly await for the arrival of hope and joy. Let us greet one another in Christian love and fellowship. Please let me know. 
Now today in uh, Coffee House, we've enjoyed our kickoff with donuts from Amazing Glaze and wonderful crafts. But we are also kicking off our Advent offering. This is a tradition that we started a couple years ago. And this year's theme is Give Hope. Now maybe you have uh, seen the boards already uh, in Fellowship Hall or outside of the office in the front lobby. Like in years past, there's envelopes, and you can take one, and in those envelopes, you'll find a prayer and a little explanation about what this mission does. So this year, it is our hope and prayer that we share hope with our brothers and sisters who've been impacted by Hurricane Maria in Puerto Rico. They still are facing unprecedented devastation as they try to recover. And so we are going to uh, raise money through our Advent offering to give to UMCOR, which is the United Methodist Committee on Relief. And then our money will specifically be earmarked to go to Puerto Rico and uh, for hurricane recovery efforts. So once again, we have set a goal of $10,000, and we just hope and pray that you will give generously through this offering. Finally, this morning, we have a ministry moment for NEST, and I would like to invite John Case to come forward, and he's going to share with us um, opportunities for us to serve our neighbors. There you go. Ah, morning, friends. I guess you probably have all either read or seen that starting Wednesday night, it's our first night of our week of sheltering the homeless uh, for this season. Now, we do this through a group called the Norfolk Emergency Shelter Team, the or NEST. It has been in operation now for 25 years, and this is our 16th year of participating with them. The, the North Emergency Shelter Team is a winter shelter. We are kind of in business from the end of uh, November to the beginning of April. That we generally take about 100 people, men and women, chronically homeless off the streets every night, you know, from downtown Norfolk, which seems to be where, you know, most of the homeless in this area are located, in that area. Um, we do this all totally with a volunteer organization. There's nobody that's, that operates in this that's not a volunteer. We have 32 churches, two synagogues, and the second year medical students from Eastern Virginia, Eastern Virginia Medical Authority who all take a week and one church takes two. So this whole thing is done, you know, basically with volunteers. Now, as far as our week goes, it does take a little bit of you know, energy on our part to get this done. Um, it takes what I refer to again, to sound familiar, you know, prayers, presence, gifts, and service. This church has been very, very gracious and very kind over the years of donating both their time and stuff for the things that we need for NEST. Um, this year, we are actually, we're getting better since the last service. Uh, we were a little short on overnight stay folks and still a little short on certain supplies, which you can find in the insert in your bulletin. It'll show you what we still need. Um, we were kind of a little short and we're still a few, few people down on our overnight stay team. Now, you know, one has always got to kind of remember a little bit about, you know, when you're doing mission work, sometimes it's really not always convenient. Sometimes it's not in our comfort zone. We, uh, we know that for a lot of you folks, serving the homeless is not in your comfort zone. Probably doing it around Christmas is not convenient. And spending the night, you know, kind of supervising and monitoring 50 to 60, you know, homeless people is probably... <laughs> Yeah, we're really not in your comfort zone either. But one thing I can assure you is that when you sign up to do anything with serving the homeless, that I am convinced that the Lord will equip you with what you need to know to get this job done. 
And also, remember that we have never had anything but good news from folks who have spent the night. You know, it's a four-person team, comes in, kind of watches the folks while they sleep. Uh, for the most part, it's a peaceful time where you're going to read, you know, you know, play games, other people in your play cards, uh, do crochet, I mean, people do all sorts of things. And uh, you get to know usually some people you didn't know very well in the church before, spending the night with them. So, you know, we still have some openings left over for that, if some of you folks can, you know, prayerfully consider that. But the main thing is, as we go forward here, for all you that can participate, you know, physically, you can just keep us in your prayers. You know, that is something that will be always very coveted by the team that's working. Thank you.
Oh God, let your blessing come upon our community as we light this first candle of Advent. And let us sing with the voices of angels coming from the realms of glory.
Gracious and holy God, heaven and earth will pass away, but your words will not pass away. Your word stands forever. May we be attentive to your word this day, so that by the power of your Holy Spirit we remember your ways and gladly do right, meeting you wherever and whenever you appear. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So this morning's scripture passage comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapters 1, verses 11 through 20. Let us hear the word of God. Then there appeared to him an angel of the Lord, standing at the right side of the altar of incense. When Zechariah saw him, he was terrified, and fear overwhelmed him. But the angel said to him, Do not be afraid, Zechariah, for your prayer has been heard. Your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son, and you will name him John. You will have joy and gladness, and many will rejoice at his birth. For he will be great in the sight of the Lord. He must never drink wine or strong drink. Even before his birth, he will be filled with the Holy Spirit. He will turn many of the people of Israel to the Lord their God. With the spirit and power of Elijah, he will go before him to turn the hearts of parents to their children and the disobedience to the wisdom of the righteous, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. Zechariah said to the angel, How will I know that this is so? For I am an old man, and my wife is getting on in years. Then the angel replied, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God. And I have been sent to speak to you and to bring you this good news. But now, because you did not believe. Jessica, if I haven't met you yet, it's good to see you guys are looking good this morning. Sit down, yeah, I know you belong to me. All right. So, how's everybody? Good. All right. Well, I had a question. Did any of you guys go to the parade yesterday? You were in the parade. That is so cool. So, why did we have a parade here in Chesapeake yesterday? Anybody know why was there a parade? What kind of parade was it? Christmas. Christmas parade. We had a Christmas parade because guess what? Christmas is, Christmas is coming, right? So today um, is the first Sunday of Advent. What is Advent? <laughs> what is Advent? You light candles in preparation for what? Well, you're very happy because Jesus is birth. Yes, Jesus is coming. Yeah, you said it. There we go. Okay, so Jesus is being born. It's coming. We're celebrating. We're anticipating. We're lighting candles. And I was thinking about something. I don't know if you guys noticed this week. Maybe some of you all noticed. Probably on like Tuesday, I was driving to an appointment. I was going down battlefield and then taking a left on Cedar Road and there were chairs like bag chairs lawn chairs every kind of chair you can imagine just lining the sides of the road people weren't sitting in them some of them were up and some of them were still in their bags there were just tons of them like somebody was collecting bag chairs and they were lining did you guys see that anybody see that anybody put a chair out there 
Anybody? I didn't. I'm new here, and I was like, somebody's giving away all these chairs. I don't know what's happening. Do you know why those chairs were out there? Saving seats for what? The Christmas parade. Why would people want to save a seat? Oh, you're so excited. Yeah, why? They wanted really good seats for the parade. And you know what that made me think about? Do you know what's coming? We talked about it already. Christmas. Christmas. And Pastor Amanda mentioned that here, at our church here, on Christmas Eve, we're going to have how many church services? Seven. Seven. So, y'all might want to bring your back chairs. <laughs> I would just start setting them up across the lawn of the church. I think if we just had... Hundreds of chairs out there. People would wonder, what are we getting all excited about? We're saving seats because we want to make sure we don't want to miss Jesus, right? And we don't want to miss that Christmas Eve service. So we have seven services on Christmas Eve. We usually don't have that many. Special this year. And all the pastors in the conference get super excited when this happens. <laughs> Christmas Eve is on a Sunday. I know, you don't even... You, Hold your excitement. <laughs> Christmas Eve is on a Sunday. So that means we have our morning services, which are actually the fourth Sunday in Advent, because right now we're in the first Sunday of Advent. Next week will be the second Sunday on the 10th, and then on the 17th we'll be in the third, and then we'll have our fourth Sunday of Advent in the, on Christmas Eve that morning. So there'll be three church services. And then, guess what? In the afternoon, we'll have our Christmas Eve services. And they're going to look totally different. Because then we'll be having our Christmas Eve services. So just letting you know, you're going to want to get your seats. Because it's going to be exciting. Like parade exciting, right? So we have these Advent wreaths. Um, the wreath here. We also have our Advent calendar. And it looks a little different this year. This is an advent calendar, all right? But it looks like what? A chain. A chain, that's right. And some of you might have made one of these or gotten supplies. Did anybody get supplies to put one of these together? You have them right there in your mouth. Can I see that? <laughs> all right, so he has a little bag here that has some paper so he can go home. It's got the pieces of the chain cut out there for you. So in the fellowship hall, some people were putting these together, and I want to encourage you guys to before you leave, we'll have some packets, like um, what he's got in his mouth there. We'll have some packets for you. You can hold them in your hand. You don't have to leave with them in your mouth. But you will get to make a chain. And th this is what you do with it. It starts at the bottom with December 1st. And Brayden, come here. This is one of mine. I did his hair. <laughs> so first we're going to take off December 1st. And he's going to read it because this is the idea. You're going to take one off each day. What does it say? The angel, of Gabriel, the, the angel Gabriel was sent from God into a city named Nazareth to a virgin named, to a virgin Mary. Awesome. And then he's going to go ahead because we started these on the first. And today is the third. third so we got to read at least the first and second. Here we go. The angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found Hast, hast found favor with God. Who wrote that? They put a T on there. Hast found. I didn't write that. All right. So you take off, you read the scripture, and then also what you get to do is you get to put some stickers on the backs of some of these as you're gluing them together. And they say some different things. Here, who wants to read one of these? What does it say? Drink hot chocolate. Drink hot chocolate. We already did that today. Awesome. Yeah, really. Thank your teachers for all they do. Thank your teachers for all they do. That would be a good one. Read one more. Write a letter to Santa. Write a letter to Santa. That's awesome. Okay, so there's things on here. Fun things to do. Things to do for other people. And the idea for the parents is to help you pick some of these that you'll actually do on some of the days that you take off. All right? And so you get to put this together. You get to take one off every day. Does anybody, did anybody not make one yet? Here, you can have the rest of that one. There you go. Here, take these. You can put some stickers on them too. All right, the rest of you go by the fellowship hall after church. All right, no, not right now. We're going to pray. 
<laughs> oh my goodness. All right, let's pray together and then you guys will go with Miss Ann, okay? Let's pray. Pray with me. Dear God, Dear God thank you for today. Thank you for today. The first Sunday, the first Sunday in, Advent. in Advent. Help us, God, Help us, God to be excited, be excited for the parade, for the parade of, Jesus. of Jesus. Amen. All right, you guys get to go have fun with this hand. Are you ready? Usually when we are asked this question, it marks uh, the, the potentially, uh, potentially major period in our life. My maid of honor, Holly, asked me this question as I was putting on my wedding dress just before I married my husband, Alan. And my labor and delivery nurse asked me this question as I was being wheeled into the OR to give birth to my firstborn via C-section. And a couple weeks ago, when I was at lunch with Pastor Tim, the day before he went out on medical leave, he asked the same question. And each time I was asked this question, I think I really wanted to scream, no, I am not ready, not in a million years. This time of year, though, people often ask us, are we ready? in reference to the Christmas season. Are you ready for Christmas? Have you bought all of your gifts? Have you mailed your Christmas cards? Have you bought your poinsettias and put up your tree? Have you hung the stockings from the chimney with care? Are you ready? Three words all of us will be hearing repeatedly over the next 21 days. And for some of our more organized friends and family, these words will not trigger stress or anxiety. But for the rest of us, we probably want to scream, no, I'm not ready, not in a million years. Well, as you've likely figured out, today is the first Sunday in Advent. This is a season we think of as a time of pre preparation for the coming of Jesus. It is a season when the church remembers the events leading up to the birth of Christ. And we also look forward as we wait for his return again. At the time Jesus was born, several hundred years had passed since the last prophet Malachi had made himself known to the Jewish people. The people of Israel had been longing for a savior for thousands of years. They had longed for a savior in times of joy and freedom and had longed for a savior even more during times of suffering and captivity. But as time passed and the Savior did not come, God's people began to wonder. They began to wonder and question during this season of silence as they witnessed untold suffering and chaos in the world, often at the hands of other people and conquerors. And many, even the most faithful, were going through the motions of their faith. Both of Zechariah and Elizabeth, they throughout their lives had faithfully served the one true God. Zechariah was a priest, and Elizabeth was both the daughter of a priest and the wife of a priest. They were faithful and obedient servants, and they had prayerfully longed for a child throughout their life. And as the years passed, it probably seemed to them less and less likely as they grew older that they would ever have this child that they wished for. 
Zachariah and Elizabeth had likely reached that point in their prayer life where in their prayer life where they had been praying for this child and maybe had come to believe that their prayers were futile. Yet despite experiencing the pain and sometimes even disgrace tied to barrenness, they went about their lives obediently, obediently doing the work that they had been called to do. And as they faithfully responded to God, Zechariah was chosen through the casting of lots. He was chosen to enter the temple and to carry out the holy work of offering the incense in the sanctuary of the Lord. Now this was a once in a lifetime opportunity for him. It was one of the highest privileges a priest could have. So you see, it was at this intersection of the pinnacle of Zechariah's career as a, as a priest and the season when their faith was being challenged as Elizabeth remained without child that the angel Gabriel appeared with his prophetic message. A message that God was on the move, preparing to do something new and incredible in their lives. God was going to transform Zechariah and Elizabeth's despair into hope. And not only was God transforming their hurt and despair, but in answering their prayers, God was doing something new, something amazing and astonishing in the world, as God surprised everyone even Zechariah, and fulfilled the scriptures through this couple. This couple who was righteous and faithful, but a couple who was also very ordinary, very much like you and I. So it's easy to understand why Zechariah may have been taken aback when the angels at Gabriel appeared and spoke his prophetic words. It can be easy to understand why Zechariah responded by questioning and expressing the smallest of doubts. A question that resulted in his experiencing a season of silence as the angel Gabriel subdued Zechariah's voice. I think all of us can relate to Zechariah and Elizabeth as we live out our lives and try to be faithful and live an honorable life as we seek to be obedient to God each day, often in times that are chaotic in our lives and often as we witness horrible suffering in the world around us. And at times we too can experience these seasons of despair, seasons of spiritual dryness, where we long for an oasis to give new life and new hope to our faith. Seasons where we long for God to make himself known to us. And in these times, we, these times when we experience doubt, as we wonder when we will feel and see and experience God's presence again. When we wonder when we will have assurance that's greater than our doubt and peace that's greater than our despair. It's in these seasons that we seek hope and seek to hear God's voice. Is anyone here familiar with the popular Christian band called Casting Crowns? Does anyone listen to K-Love? Well, they have an amazing song. It's called I Heard the Bells on Christmas Day. If you haven't heard it, I encourage you to listen to it. You can hear it online or on the radio. They play it all the time during Advent. 
Well, this popular song was based on a poem written in 1863 at the height of the American Civil War. It was written by the great American poet, Henry Wadsworth Longfellow. Longfellow penned the words, and in despair I bowed my head, there is no peace on earth, I said. For hate is strong and mocks the song of peace on earth, goodwill to men. Longfellow, in these words, was expressing his deep despair and anguish during the season of darkness he experienced following the death of his wife. His wife had died two years earlier in a fire, and then after his wife had passed, his oldest son had been severely, nearly fatally injured in the battle of New Hope Church right here in Virginia. In the darkness, Longfellow was seeking hope and light. And he ends the poem with words of hope as he writes, Hearing the voice of God in the Christmas bells, then pale the bells more loud and deep, God is not dead, nor doth he sleep. The wrong shall fail, the right prevail, with peace on earth, goodwill to men. In the bells of Christmas, Longfellow heard the voice of God and found hope in the midst of his suffering, light in the midst of his darkness. And in hearing the voice of God, Longfellow surrendered to the possibility, the possibility that the light of Christ was present in his suffering. Are you ready? Perhaps the question of Christmas is not so much, are you ready? Have you finished your shopping and mailed your cards and planned the perfect holiday meal? Perhaps the question, are you ready, is, are you ready? Are you ready to surrender to God and prepare your heart for God to move in your life? Are you prepared for God to act in ways that are new and unexpected and have the potential to change the world? Are you ready? Are you ready to, for God to answer your prayers? Have you ever thought about that? All the prayers that we pray are we ready for God's answers? Was Zechariah ready when he heard that prophetic word from the angel Gabriel? Or like Zechariah, do you need a season of quiet to prepare yourself for what is to come? Are you ready are you ready for the possibility that God may be preparing to do something great through you, through us, as he did in the lives of Zechariah and Elizabeth? Are you ready is the question of Christmas. In this new year, as we begin Advent, we are being called to understand Christmas through a new lens, to understand the season of preparation differently as we look at new stories, the stories behind those stories we are so familiar with. We are being called to be open to the fact that we are in a season to prepare our hearts and to open our eyes and to open our ears to hear the voice of God and to see the new thing, the new thing that God is doing in our lives. 
So my hope and prayer for each of you, not only this Advent season, but also this new year, is that your eyes and ears are opened. Open to seeing God's work in your midst and open to hearing the voices of Christmas. That you hear God's message to you from the angels, shepherds, and prophets in your life. Thanks be to God. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. 
unexpectedly admitted to the hospital late this week and has asked that we hold her in prayer throughout the coming week. And the Benjaminson family, um, who is grieving the loss of Ruth's mother, who passed away yesterday. May the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, God of power and glory, we remember your awesome deeds across the ages, the times when you saved us and brought us home, and the times when we have felt alone and afraid. Oh God, we are your people, and we know you hear our prayers. We pray for those who look to you for healing and hope. We pray for those who are sick or recuperating from illness and injury. We lift up to you those who are lonely and in need of companionship. Oh God, we pray for those to whom the holidays bring sorrow or pain. We pray for those whose deep sadness overshadows their joy. We pray for people who are in need of restoration, healing, and reconciliation. We lift up to you those who are battling addiction and those who are in recovery. We pray for those who are estranged from people they love. For those who are lost in grief. We lift up to you those who are suffering from depression and other forms of mental illness. Let your face shine upon us, O God, that we might be saved. Renew in us and in the world a spirit, a spirit that has grown weary with waiting and hoping. We especially pray for wars to end and for peace to prevail, for hunger and poverty to be crowded out by abundance. We pray, too, for the church, that we experience a revitalization, that our hearts are on fire for Jesus and the coming of the Christ child. We lift all this up to you in the name of the one, the one who came and walked with us and taught us to pray, our Father.
very successful surgery on Tuesday. He was able to go home Wednesday, and he has been resting comfortably at home throughout the week. He asked that we continue to lift him and Anne and their family up in prayer as he <laughs> continues to recover in the next days and weeks ahead. He is very tired, um, as you would be following surgery, and he continues to struggle with pain. So if you could pray for those things, I know he would be grateful for that. And we look forward to him returning uh, for Christmas Eve. Let us bow our heads for God's benediction. <clears throat> May the rough places in your life be made smooth. May the valleys of despair be filled with comfort. May the door to your heart be open wide. May the hope and peace of Emmanuel be with you all of your days. And the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit be upon you and remain in your hearts forevermore.